Welcome to Remolations. We're your hosts. I'm Mindy. And I'm Brooke. Remolations is a dream interpretation podcast where we read listeners' dreams from nightmares to the just plain bizarre. Join us as we give you our comedic interpretation of your fucked up REM cycle. I have a dream coming in this week from Chris that has to do with cashless casinos, dining and dashing, and eyeball aggression. <laughs> Nothing That's like right. eyeball aggression. Eyeball aggression. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we have some fantastic catnaps this week about crashing a sprinter van, sad gray bikinis, shallow grays, and rude baristas. Rude. Not okay. Not okay. And I'm going to be talking about an article I read about how to create a healthy morning routine when you wake up. Let's do it, bestie. Let's get started. Woo! Okay, I'm ready. I always say hi. What am I going to say? Um, hi, Mindy. We always start the same way. Hi. 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 I'm going to start. I'm gonna, okay. Let me. Okay. Yo, bitch. What's up? Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? I don't know the same bitch I've had for 30 years as my side bitch. And he's still my side bitch. We're in a fight. Just kidding. I love We're going to. No, okay, no, we couldn't be. <laughs> hi, lovely. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. I love seeing your face. Thank you. Love seeing your face. It looks Thank like you. I don't know if it's the light coming into your room, but it looks like your hair is pink. Did you dye it, it is. or is it just it's pink? It's just pink. Yeah. You dyed your hair pink like last night. Okay. I know. I, thought... I know it hasn't I... been that long, but yeah. I was like, um, it kind I... of is orangey though. No, I can tell it was pink because I'm at first I was like, was it the light coming in your window? But no, it's love just it. a very, very light. Loves, pink. loves. Just felt like doing it. Just felt like doing something different. Yeah, you know me with my hair. It's always on the move. Gorge. It's gorge. <laughs> well, I'm not going to waste any time tonight. I'm going to get into a dream because that's kind of a long dream tonight. Ooh, okay. I'm in. And this dream comes to us from Chris. He is from NYC, but currently lives in Richmond, Virginia, he said. Ooh. It's kind of long, so please bear with me. Will do. <laughs> so it's, and this is, it's a lot. There's a lot of symbols and a lot going on, so. Okay. So it starts with me in a casino. But the casino was set up like a mall. Each game was like its own store. (laughs) Then I see a guy I know, and it looked like he needed money. But I didn't have any cash. (laughs) And all the ATMs in the casino were like when you go to the arcade and you could load a card for the games. So, no cash. Um, That's bad business at a casino. (laughs) Right? What casino doesn't take cash? You should really have cash. Actually, Resorts World in Las Vegas tried to do, like, the no cash policy. Like, with pretty little cards. So you can, like, like, monitor your gambling. I'm like, no. I'm okay with getting a little slip of paper, you know, for your Not cash the ching, out. ching, ching. I like the ching, ching, ching. I don't like the black hands that you get yeah, from. Yeah, agreed. Very but the ex- And they make noises now anyway that make it even exciting you don't need the ching 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 but i need you can't cash you need cash cash. i was then told there was a restaurant down the road with an actual atm so i told the guy that needed the money i would be right back i ended up at the restaurant but they wouldn't let me use the atm unless i ate there (laughs) (laughs) is that like you can't use the bathroom somewhere unless you buy something that's right yes that's right they served me the weirdest looking meatloafs. Ew, they were kind you, of. Why didn't you get an appetizer or just a soda? It seemed something? like you didn't have a choice. <laughs> One thing on the menu. <laughs> the meatloafs were kind of thin and curved like small racks of ribs. I ate um, them and then used the ATM and went back to the casino. Okay. It reminds me of like the McRib, even though it's like not yeah. a rib. It's like a pre pork. It's made to look pork. like a rib. <laughs> patty. But it's got, like, indents in it, right? Like, are supposed to be, like, bones? Yes, I never understood that. <laughs> Mark will go to McDonald's one time a year, and it's when the McRib comes out. Brett goes crazy when it's McRib I don't time. Know. 
I don't get it. Maybe I've had it once once in a while. It's not like available year round, so people get excited. But (laughs) I don't get it. Mm. (laughs) No, I've had it. It's not that great. I've never had one. Hmm. That guy was waiting out in front, and I gave him the money, and he thanked me. Then. The waitress from the restaurant approached and said I forgot to pay my bill and asked if I would follow her back to the restaurant to take care of it. I agreed. She took me a different route. We went by this old building that was very D.C.-like in style, like an old government building. Okay. Then she said we had to climb over the building to get there. I'd be like, I just walked there last time. Do I have to rappel over a Why can't we just... Do it that way. <laughs> this seems like too much work to pay my bill. Yes. Just... <laughs> Never mind. She said that we had to climb over the building to get there. She didn't say why, and it seemed normal to me in the dream. I guess it's because I didn't question anything. We easily climbed up to the top, but she was ahead of me. So when I made it up there, she was gone. Okay. She's like holding like the check presenter. But I, but I need to pay. But oh, no, yeah, please. Never mind. Please. I'm going back to the casino. <laughs> I'd be like, I tried. I tried. (laughs) I heard her, moments later, calling for help. I rushed around this roof trying to follow the sound of her voice when I fell through the roof and ended up in a kitchen. Luckily, Mm. I landed perfectly fine like a cat. Oh, gorgeous. (laughs) Brilliant. (laughs) I hear a strange noise and then hear her helling helling for help. Helen! Helen Helen Yelp! Yelp! Helen Yelp! Yelp me! (laughs) I fell through the kitchen. <laughs> I went like a cat. I hear a strange noise and her yelling for help. And it's in this hall just outside the kitchen. I pull out my phone and turn on the flashlight. As soon as I enter the hall, I turn right. A ghoulish creature is in front of me, looking like a long, deceased old lady. Long? A long, a long, a long deceased. Not lady. tall. No, nope. long, long deceased lady. A ghoulish, long deceased old lady. <laughs> That's pretty funny. She is all hollow and ghost like, except her eyeballs. Ew. I didn't. <laughs> Those look human like? Were like, they long ew. too? <laughs> long balls? <laughs> That's not good either. (laughs) I didn't feel scared, and I quickly reacted and just grabbed her eyeballs and quickly (laughs) ripped them from her spectral face. You know, that should do it. I feel like that should take care of stuff. Yeah, and that's the way to get rid of ghosts. I'm in. And sharks. I'm bringing up sharks again. (laughs) Aggressive men. Aggressive men. She screamed and faded away like a mist being blown by a strong breeze. Okay. okay. I, guess, I guess he never found the, the server because the next thing he says is, I left and went home. I was laying at home, but it's not my real home, in my bedroom with my girlfriend. Okay. And it was very early and I had not slept yet. When we hear the front door open and my father walks in calling our names, we get up and he tells us to come outside. My whole family is there in two pickup trucks. They all live in different parts of the country, so I never see them all together. Ah! We're like we gotta swing by Omaha to get Uncle John, or then we're heading to Florida to pick up oh, cousin God. Jake, and then cousin we're heading up Jake. to Pennsylvania and pick up Grandma Betty. We'll be over soon. That's so funny. That was my grandma's name. Oh, I know. They just wanted to say hello and see if we wanted to go somewhere with them. We declined, but said we would meet up with them later. Then I feel like there's a scene change in the stream. Mm-hmm. There's a couple scene change. There was a jump in time, and I was at now, and I was now at my sister's house, not her real house. We were in a small room, and she was asking what was wrong. I told her about what had happened, and she told me I must have been dreaming. The room was oddly dark, and she had a projector playing some random video. When she got up and started to walk away, she made a weird noise. No. And it sounded like that noise I heard in the building. So I jumped up, and I threw my sister up against the wall and turned her around. Her face was covered in shadow, and all I could see at that moment was her mouth. This is weird. I'm in it, though. I'm in for it. She gave me this super huge 
demonic looking smile and said, You can't stop what's coming. Fuck and then no. she began to chuckle. Mm. Then her eyes opened, and it was the same eyes as the ghoulish lady from the building. Long I eyes? I did. <laughs> long eyes. Those lady long, long eyes. Lady, lady long, long eyes. eyes. I did the same thing with no fear and no hesitation. I ripped her eyes out. Oh, his sister? But it wasn't my sister at all. Mm -hmm. Just a hollow shell that looked like her. I noticed something different. In each empty eye socket, there was a small person, (gasps) a small person-shaped doll made out of burlap and wrapped in twine. I Burlap then... wrapped in twine? That's the worst outfit ever. <laughs> it in reminds your eyes? Me. It reminds me. Do you ever make those worry dolls when you were a kid? No, but I know the what crafts. you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, it was one of those crafts. I don't know. Maybe any of the kids of the 80s, 90s will understand. You took toothpicks. You broke them mm-hmm. into little things. And then you would wrap thread, colored thread around to make them look like little stick. Red wrapped worry dolls. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Nasty. Scratchy. Don't belong in your eyes. Scratchy. That's all. It's Burlap in your eyes. Ow. <laughs> no, thanks. I pulled them out and just stared at the two of them in my hands. And then I woke up. I've had some strange dreams before, but nothing that was this long that I can remember. My girlfriend thinks someone may be doing some sort of voodoo or something on me, but I'm not a believer in that, personally. I figured I would submit my dream and see what you guys think. Well, Chris, I don't think you necessarily have to believe in voodoo if the person putting (laughs) the voodoo on you does. Yeah, voodoo Uh, eye dolls. Long women. Long (laughs) eyes. Long women. Because, I mean, this... And if you remember, at the beginning, we started a casino. So... We went a long ways away from the casino. (laughs) Big journey. <laughs> There's lots, lots to talk about. <laughs> a lot to talk Chris's about. This, Chris. dream. I want to tell our besties out there how they can be super cool. cool. And that's by joining our sleepover squad. And you can do that by going to remolations.com slash support. And then you'll get videos of every episode plus extra episodes. And kind of a, what would you say, gag reel of footage that's hilarious, clips cut from other episodes that you're dying to see. You don't even know it yet. And this is also where you can submit dreams, your dream stories, and buy merch. So, remolations.com slash support. Do it. Just do it. Just do it. (laughs) Michael, Jordan, and Brooke say, just do it. Yep. We're the two most iconic sports figures in the U.S. <laughs> yes, in Brooke's sport of receiving so, gifts. Yes. I'm really Number good one. at it. Yeah. <laughs> Real good. That's funny, Mindy. That's yeah. good. I love it. <laughs> all right, Chris. Chris, Let's, Chris. Wow. Chris, we went Chris, all Chris. over. We started a casino. Not just a normal casino, but a, a cashless casino that has separate Bad. rooms for games. Bad business plan. Casinos we talked about. It can be a desire for excitement in your life or a chance you should take or even a willingness to take chances. It's also a loud place. Loud. And often a smoky place with a variety of clientele and lots of people. So there's Mm -hmm. lots going on too. Lots going on. And I wonder if this, and in, in if I take it into the whole dream, does it have to do with balance? Setting, getting small doses of, say, excitement or setting limits in your life. Mm-hmm. The fact that it's in different rooms, I feel that either Chris is car- compartmentalizing issues. I was just going to say it, but I'm like, that is a hard word to say, compartmentalizing. Or yeah. is it... That he needs to compartmentalize issues in his waking life. Only Chris knows that answer. Is he good at it? Is he not good at it? It's going to come down to whatever this full dream interpretation is that he he'll I he'll get to. I feel like maybe he's not good at it because it didn't. Me- I felt like it would have mentioned maybe he won something at the <laughs> something casino positive. to yeah. lead like 
to give us a positive, but it kind of went downhill from there. So yeah. I think maybe you're right. He maybe needs to learn how to comp- compartmentalize. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, we talk How many about times the, can we say that? This, in this that let's move on from this part so we don't have That's to say it, it again. <laughs> done. Uh, we talk about cash and ATM. And it's not that this part is bad. Actually, I think this is a positive part of Chris and who he is. Wanting to help someone. Mm-hmm. He has perhaps a lot of self-worth or value that he wants to give to someone. I feel like this dream is a straight up financial situation dream for some it reason. Sure seems like it I because mean, between he doesn't pay the bill at the restaurant. Wanting to help he, someone, you know, like there's lots of money issues in this. Yeah, right. casino. That's where it's all. It's all coming down to me. So I'm wondering if Chris is having a financial situation. I think if he is, there's a positive light at the end of the tunnel because he is giving his money away. But before he can do that, he kind of has to jump through hoops. Yeah. There's always an obstacle before the victory, right? You always right. have to, you should have to work for something and then it's more rewarding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And is it in his nature to help people? Does he enjoy giving gifts or perhaps helping people through telling his own experience? And is Chris single? <laughs> well, he said he had a girlfriend, Brooke. I'm sorry. Damn it. Damn it. How long ago did was this dream submitted? <laughs> Uh, so I think financial aspects is a big part of this dream. Helping himself and helping others is an yeah. important part of this dream. He's got a good heart. I feel that, yeah. Yeah. But the last thing is this positive outlook. So let's get into like the comfort, the helping mm-hmm. others. We go to a restaurant. We get served meatloaf. What is a more comforting food than perhaps meatloaf? Give it to me every day, do, baby. Do you love meatloaf? I, I do you love like it? meatloaf. Do you? Okay. Lo- no, You don't? No, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I was going to say, maybe you haven't had my mom's meatloaf yet, and we have to love correct to. that situation. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Please, I'd love to try it. I'll bring one the next time I come. I'll have her make one. <laughs> oh, my God. We'll wrap it in foil. Please. And I'll bring it, and we will defrost it and eat Devour it. Devour it? Mm. Mm. Yes. Uh, meatloaf is one of those things that people love or don't, and even if you do like it, it's you, it's good in moderation. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's, something you can have on the weekly rotation. It's hearty. And there's many different types of meatloaf. So besties out there, if you <laughs> say you don't like meatloaf, keep trying. There's going to be one you love, I promise. Unless you're like vegetarian or vegan, you probably <laughs> then, don't want it. No. I'm sure there's an impossible meatloaf Ve- out there. Veggie loaf, perhaps? Veggie loaf. But keep trying. Keep trying. You're going to find one you like. <laughs> so not only is that symbol... For me, representing comfort and comforting food, it's about eating and n- nourishing yourself. Absolutely. And it's also about good things in moderation, just like yeah. the gambling, just like eating Milo. Good things in moderation. Then we have the issue of the bill, which, again, I brings up the financial things mm-hmm. with, with what I'm thinking this dream's about. He's so focused on the next exciting thing or the ability to help someone, he's not dealing with the issue at hand. And maybe Either financially that's a defense or emotionally. mechanism for him. Yeah. He like, needs to I I need to help myself, but he doesn't put himself first. So he's like, Yes. I'll help someone else so I don't have to think about my own problem. I gotta pay for that meatloaf, damn it. Gotta pay for that meatloaf and climb over the White House to do it. <laughs> but it's like the fact that the ATM, you couldn't even use the ATM until you gave money to buy a meat. Like, yeah, it's all, it's all it's all messed connected. up. So he gives the money away, which is great. Very kind of him. I wish I had been there. <laughs> and then, But then the server tracks him down and puts him through this rigmarole to get rigmarole to get rigmarole. Rigmarole? Rig- rigmarole. Rigger- all or mole? Mole. Rigmarole. rigmarole. Puts him through, through hell to, hell to, to get bill. You think he would just be simple because he's got cash at this point. He went to the ATM. Just why can't you just hand it to her? Why do you have to go through these obstacles? And also, does this restaurant not accept credit either? Is this like a cash only dream? World? Is this a cash? So a cashless casino and a cash only restaurant. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-mm. He's climbing over the building. I want to know what was it. Are we talking the IRS? 
Are we talking the CIA? Ooh. Are we talking the FBI, the NTSB? Like, what government building are we? I'll tell you what, though. The CIA is in Langley, okay. which a, I want to say is in Virginia, which is where he lives. Maybe, maybe. And correct me if I'm wrong, besties. I think it is. But the obstacle's big. It's in his way. But he climbs over it, which is... A positive sign. But when yeah. he does get to the roof, he falls through the roof. So it's God kind of that it. idea of like making progress, falling, falling back. You One know? step forward, two steps back or whatever the saying is. I don't know. For me, it's that's how it is financially when you have kids. Just when you have some money saved, there goes the toilet. And then you have some money saved and then there goes the dishwasher. And it's. I get, Guess ugh. what, though? It happens when you don't have kids. Too. <laughs> it happens when you don't have money. Happens when you do have Trust money. Trust me, it happens when you don't have kids. Too. Right, right. But I did just spend like I don't, know, I don't want money on soccer uniforms. Well, soccer Mindy, uniforms. you have six children, okay, and two yes. of them are twins, which we know. So that's twice as much at one time than normal as well. Yes. Like you said, you had to have two proms. <laughs> two grad, like two graduate, like Grad- everything is double yes. with twins. So double yeah. the fun, double the cost. <laughs> but, so Chris falls through the ceiling, which I just see him as a setback, but it doesn't stop him. No, although it, it does take a shift in everything when the old lady ghost shows up at the kitchen. The long lady, the long ghost, the long lady ghost. <laughs> although she's kind of scary, he doesn't freak out. No. But the fact that the eyes were mentioned more than once is a sign that's popping out to me. Like oh, literally? literally? He, popped them, <laughs> he popped them out of that bitch's head. Right out. And his sisters, too. My <laughs> God. Sisters. He goes for the eyes. <laughs> but eyes and dreams can often mean how we either see ourselves or how we imagine other people see us. Mm. So maybe he doesn't like how people see him right now. Or maybe right. he doesn't like how he sees himself. And he's taking that and ripping it right out. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's taking action, though. He's, he's taking not sitting action. Still. He's not sitting still and sitting on it. Maybe he's acting a little more aggressively than he should. Mm, true. The next thing we have is he's at his house, not his house, his house, not his house, with his girlfriend. His dad shows up. And again, it's kind of that going back to comfort, going back to that yeah. idea Family. of family meatloaf comfort feel like he's got a good support system if his family's all showing up from all over parts of the world just to hang out i feel like he's got people he can reach out to a huge sign in this dream he is surrounded by love like you said if they're willing to come from all over that shows that he does have the support and maybe he's just not tapping into that support exactly exactly and if it is something that is financially or uh, a problem that you're having, maybe you need to reach out to someone who you're close with. But also because of the demon sister, I also feel like it's telling him not to take advantage of a situation because you should be able to, your sister there should be a comfort for you. Mm -hmm. But he pulls his sister's eyes out and reveals like voodoo dolls in the eye sockets. But again, I'm concerned about how he's being seen by his Mm -hmm. family, perhaps I think or how, of... or I'm sorry to interrupt, mm-hmm. or how he thinks he's being mm-hmm. seen by his family because maybe he's misinterpreting miscommunication with something. Yeah. Like maybe they don't feel that way at all. Like maybe they're so supportive, but he's just not feeling that for some yeah. reason. Yeah, I think you have a good heart, Chris. You're trying to help others. You might be trying to help others before you help yourself. Mm-hmm. You might be wanting to go for that excitement before you start setting li- limits on what you need to do. Yep. But overall, I think it's a positive outlook. He controlled the narrative of the dream. He took charge. He scaled yep. the building. I think even though we make progress, sometimes it takes a step back. But overall, I think Chris is going to figure it out. I think he's... He's willing to go the distance. He's willing to put in the work. Yeah. He, he had to walk all the way to the restaurant. He had to climb the building. I know. He's going to get there. Whatever he needs to accomplish, he's going to get there. He's going to get there. Because he's persevering through it all, but... Ooh, he's just having some challenges with the long ladies and the long eyeballs. Eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. You got it, Chris. Are you ready for me to ask you a question, Mindy? I am ready, and I am 
bready. And I just changed my bready. mind about the question. I oh. <laughs> just literally changed my mind. About yeah, okay. It. Okay. Okay. Throw it at me. Okay. Would you rather find a one hundred dollar bill floating in a public toilet or a twenty dollar bill in your own pocket? <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking the twenty dollar bill. I'm not that broke. I am that broke. I'm taking the money out of the toilet and I'm going to wash my hands and wash that 20 and, or 100 and lay it out to dry. I'm taking the 20. I a public You're I not mean, even going to try to reach in and take it? I didn't I mean, it didn't say there was anything. Okay. So again, we're like yeah, making up okay, our okay, scenario. Overall, yes. If there was stuff uh, in who, the toilet with it. How about like a a um a toilet? At a circus next to a chili dog stand. Did you take it again? Out? Was it flush? Porta potty. Before... Porta potty. Oh, porta potty. That's a whole different <laughs> ball game. Twenty dollars for sure if it's a porta potty. <laughs> if it's a in a toilet, a hundred bucks. I'm at going. the subway. Okay. Okay. No, I'm just taking oh. twenty. Okay. You know what's funny? It's like, are we about fifty fifty on the things we agree I on? I'm keeping the track. Yeah, on? I think yeah. I love it. It's funny. It's funny. Bestie, if you want to tell us if you're reaching your hand into a toilet, <laughs> you can join us on Facebook. We have a Facebook group called Revelations Besties. Just search for it and join in the conversation. Tell us what's it worth to you to reach your hand in a toilet. Dying to know. No what if it's hands. two Benjamins in there, Mindy? See, there's always there's always more when you have if you ten, you're talking a grand, I'm probably reaching in the toilet, but for one hundred. Okay, no. wait, 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 wait. Okay, if you're saying a grand, <laughs> we're we'll still have things come. This yes. is what Virgo brains do. Yes. If this if is why when we have grand, sleepovers, we don't sleep until don't, 4 a.m. We don't have sleep in our sleepover. No. This is us laying in the same bed and having <laughs> these conversations random, totally random. That's what we do. Okay, so if it's a grand, okay, mm-hmm. let's go with this scenario. And a porta potty. What do you do? No. Oh. <laughs> that made the question what? tough, did it? No. I don't think I could do it. I don't think I could do it. Plus, it's not my money. So if I talk about Mindy, if maybe someone, someone loses their money in a porta potty, their money in their back pocket, they need it. I'm oh, are they coming as... back to the porta potty? Do they realize? That that's where they lost it? Are they going to wait in line? Maybe. Mindy, you lo- the person you lost behind it. you is going to take that money out maybe of the porta you potty. Lost, maybe you lost the $1,000 in the porta potty. My bad. I'm the next person. I'm going to My bad. You. Okay, but the person behind you is going to take the 1000 if you don't. Let's say that. that so it's e- I can't do 1000 in a porta potty. Don't keep increasing the money. We will not have time to finish this podcast tonight. <laughs> You're right. I, okay. Ooh, that would be. Ooh, I hate porta potties so much. So Everyone much. should, and does. That's a lot of mm. money. Mm. I'm not going to answer my own question. I said twenty dollars in a public restroom. There's no porta potty involved. Okay. Okay. I'm in. I mean, a hundred dollars in the public restroom. Oh yeah. <laughs> twenty dollars in your pocket. Yeah. Right. I'd probably do twenty dollars in a public restroom. She's like, I would do ten. <laughs> no, not ten. At least twenty. <laughs> She, the girl's got limits. She's got limits. All right, bestie. That brings us to cat naps, which is a part of the show where we read a bunch of listener dreams. Dream stories, one sentencers. We just want to get as many of your dreams on the show as possible. So I think, Brooke, it is your turn to kick it off. This is so bizarre, Mindy. I'm Again, besties, we don't plan this. I find my own cat naps and my own dreams. Mindy does the same. And it's all a surprise to both of us. But listen to this is just sync. This is just crazy. Okay. Yeah. This is Amanda from Boston. In the dream, I was in a public bathroom. Hmm. Not mm-hmm. even kidding. This is okay. the dream. Or and she writes, or bathhouse question mark? Hmm. I don't know. But it was a room with tiles, so it looked like a bathroom. And supposedly people bathed and showered publicly in the space. Uh, okay, no. Uh, I gotta ask you a question. What is your whole feeling on like spas where like like it, even if it's all women, like going into sure. the sauna with just a towel around your waist or going hmm. into 
like a mud bath naked with other people around. I know you oh, yeah. you never like to change in gym class even, so is that like <laughs> still a thing? Um, no, still I think just because we were raised very modestly in Catholic yeah. households, I think mm-hmm. I'm a lot less caring about it now. Like, right. it, it probably doesn't bother me. I mean, I've been in bridal rooms and I have seen ass and titties more than ass and titties. a girl ass needs ass to on a wedding day. But so it doesn't bother me for myself. No, I'm I saying would probably... it doesn't bother me to see other people. Yeah. But would you be bothered being topless, let's say, in a sauna? I'd hike. I, pro- my I probably towel wouldn't choose to. Bit. I probably wouldn't choose to. No, I think I'd hike my towel up. If there was an option, no. But if that was like, if I was somewhere on vacation and like that's the culture and that's something you should do, I'd be like, okay, fine. Yeah, that's different. Again, we have we always have a work. We, for us. we always have girls and work. For okay, us. all right, back to me. <laughs> I was surrounded by about a dozen people that weren't really doing anything except watching me. No, see that? Nope. If someone's just watching me naked, then I've, then probably no. Is this a spa or what? (laughs) Where are you? (laughs) Some weren't even paying attention to me, but looking at their phones. That's fine. Yeah. I think we were all naked, but for some reason, I didn't mind that, but still felt anxious. Yeah. I think... I was sitting in the water talking to my sister when suddenly the room was filled up with a big tidal wave that came crashing down upon us. No one was scared. No one was hurt. Instead, (laughs) it's hydrotherapy. You know, I love my hydrotherapy. Wave therapy. It's Mm. the best therapy in the Mm -hmm. world. Check it out, peeps. Check it out. People were having fun like it was a water park. Yay. Naked water park. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) A few more waves came crashing. Each one seemed deadlier, but Mm. never hurt. Okay. And then I woke up. Mm, Mm, Water. Water, water, water. water. I like that it's dangerous water, but no one's getting hurt. Yes. Mm. So the feeling of danger, but yeah, mm, it's good. Let us know if we can get a Groupon for there. (laughs) We're going. Only with a Groupon, though. And only if a tidal wave is promised. Please. Yeah. All right. Coming up next, I have Anne from Lexington, Kentucky, which is funny because I was just in Kentucky. Um, you guys, bestie, for three hours as I slept. Check out last week's episode if you want to hear Mindy's Kentucky story. <laughs> All right. She has a trigger warning on this one. Gore. Lots of gore. Oh, okay. I love it. I was about 13 when I had this dream about four years ago. So Anne's a youngin. Baby. I remember most of the things about this dream, and it still scares me. And I can still remember the pain I felt. Mmm. I was in a doctor's office. It was supposed to be a normal checkup. A nurse offered me a cup of water. I was extremely thirsty, so I took the cup and drank most of the water. I then remember getting very sleepy and my vision getting very blurry. Not good who is this no. nurse ratchet who is this nurse <laughs> get out get out do you have get a witness out. in the room change change medical offices this is no good i passed out <sighs> i later woke up strapped down in a dark operating room this is no good uh, i heard well this isn't even be- any better i heard <laughs> laughing in the corner of the room it's bad enough it's dark but then to have like laughter No, maybe I don't like this I don't like this for Anne. I started struggling. Suddenly, a bright light turned on. Four or five doctors surrounded me Mm -mm. and were laughing at me. I I hate this right now. I I was completely naked. (gasps) What? Again? She had this dream at 13. So Yeah, but mm. we're having, again, crosses, naked nudities. Nudity. But 13. And no, no. I was completely naked. Mm. A nurse walked in and gave the doctors operating tools. One doctor mm. took a scalpel and started cutting my abdomen. No. I cried and screamed for help. No. It hurt so much. Slowly, he kept cutting until they reached my organs. They mm-hmm. pulled back the flaps of skin. They all smiled, and one doctor held my head and made me watch what they were doing. Oh, my God. Put me out. Put me out. I want those sleeping pills again. 
give me the nurse. Give me another glass of water. I need to be knocked out. (laughs) If I fainted, they would just wake me up and make (gasps) me watch. That is horrifying. They... They're they like wake slapping her, her up, in the face. Like from passing out from pain and then they wake her up to give her more pain. That is make her watch diabolical. They pulled out my organs one by one. They would crush them in their hands and bite my intestines. Ah. So it's not even like they're doing medical research, organ donation, black this is market. This just torture and sadism. Sick. No. Sick people. She's right. This is awful. I wanted it to be over. It hurt so much. They were slowly taking out my organs, keeping me alive as long as possible before they reached my heart and lungs. Oh, they had a plan even. Well, they're doctors. They're smart. (laughs) They're like, "Mm, gallbladder first to go. Maybe they're Virgo doctors. They've got a plan, but they're still sociopaths. (laughs) (laughs) So true. They all stared at my heart, pulled it out. Each of them took a bite out of it and then shoved it in my mouth. Oh, my God. This might be the worst dream we've ever read. I this, felt- is, this is tied, I think, with the girl watching her sister burn in an oven. <laughs> That's true. That was pretty bad. That was pretty bad, but this is Top ten. Warm. Top three. Top ten. You, congratulations. You've made... We should make a top ten list. Oh, my God. The yes, most let's. horrifying visuals. I felt my life drain. I felt my heart twitch in my mouth. <laughs> and then I woke up. My pillow was drenched with tears. Just a little extra here. Okay. A week after this dream, I was diagnosed with a severe panic disorder and put on medication. Shut up. Because of the dream, or was it? I don't know. Like that's what I'm wondering. Like, is it a warning, or is it because of this? Wow, that one was intense. Thirteen, though. Oh, it just breaks my heart to have such a dream at such a baby age. It is a baby age, and I'm sorry. That's just horrible. Like it's. Old enough that, you know, we've read a lot of first dreams where it's like, oh, Mickey Mouse is an evil monster. But but not eating your organs and shoving your heart in your mouth? That's like a difference between a seven-year-old dream and a 13. Because you understand how the world works a little more at 13. And it's so much scarier. Oh, and give me the nightmares. Mm. Just think about, like, your youngest, Mindy, okay? Like, very close to that age, right? Yeah, 15. Close. Close enough. I would want her to have that. No. No, you wouldn't. It would break your heart. It It would break your heart. Yeah, it's terrible. This is Christine, and she's from Minneapolis. All right. My dream takes place in a campground with my mom and one of her old boyfriend's RVs with his kids. Okay. And she puts in parentheses, his kids were spoiled brats, as another (laughs) disclaimer. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. I'm tasked with watching them and they make a mess and start an electrical fire. Which no. This pisses me off. Well, sure. No, fires and RVs, not good. Yeah. I try to take away their games and she says they were Nintendo Switches. <laughs> of course. And I'm met with backlash from my mom and their dad. After this, I am then tasked with going with my step cousins and my sister to drive a Sprinter van. To pick stuff up. Wait, how old are you? Shouldn't you be driving a sprinter van? Um, yeah, how old are you, Christy? I'm 40-some year old, 40 some years old, and when I went on vacation and we rented a sprinter van for all of our kids, I refused to drive it. It was too big. Too big. (laughs) Mark had to drive the whole time. (laughs) I don't want to drive a sprinter van either. (laughs) That is big van. The entire time in the van, I'm irritated and I don't want to be there. Then when we're about to head back from our errand, they tell me to drive i have driven sprinter vans before for various jobs with no incidents as another fyi okay good to know this van is different though and i can't can't get control of the speed or steering oh that's good that's not how you want to drive something that's important speed and steering (laughs) brakes also important 
I begin crashing into cars and running people over. Oh, no. Until I swerve off the edge of a cliff into the ocean. Shit. Oh, so not That's good. That's not good. <laughs> when we crash into the water, I remain calm with the situation. Sort of like on a school bus and easing the feeling of a big bump by adjusting your body. Okay. Okay. She opens up the back exit door and tells the kids to get out. <laughs> right. I do that and I'm able to emerge with no injuries. However, when I see the vehicle, it's not a sprinter van. It's a red two-person utility truck. Oh. <laughs> and none of the people I was with are there at the scene. People come to help me, but no ambulance or police were ever called. Just crowds of people mm. looking, then leaving. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Goodbye. That's not helpful. Not no, helpful. not at all. At this Take point, a I realize <laughs> it lasts longer. <laughs> I hope she said that. I hope she, she did. didn't mention it in her dream, but I'm I'm pretending I'm sure in my head did. she did yeah. say that. At this point, I realize this can't be reality. It must be a dream. However, I stay in the dream and I'm sucked back into re its reality and feel depressed and angry and annoyed. Mm. Wow. I realize my phone is gone and I want to go back in the water to try to find it. But one of the people who helped me tells me they will do it. Okay, that's nice. Okay. They somehow have my number and try to call it. <laughs> but it isn't in that truck that went in the water. Okay. Then, look at this, another wave. Then a wave crashes oh. against the shore and it scares me and reminds me of the fact that I crashed not so long ago. Oh, oh yeah. Remember that? I think you'd remember Yeah, remember, that. remember when remember you when crashed? I drove a the car off the... van that turned into a utility truck? Off mm -hmm. the cliff? Yeah, I'd remember. And then I woke up. Mm. I mm. hate when they wake up, Mindy. I hate when they wake up and we don't we'll have answers. Stay in the dream world and answer and just wrap it up in a nice little bow for us. I know, but thank you, Christine. Thank you for that dream. It's horrifying, but thank you. It's horrifying, but thank you. This one is anonymous. Ooh. I'm a 30-year-old male that recently had a dream that I was a woman. I was going out with friends, I guess to swim, question mark? We were all changing into our bathing suits, and I was putting on this light Sexy. gray bikini <laughs> that I really liked. I got upset because an accessory I wanted to wear was broken, and then the dream ended. What? <laughs> it's like a laugh cry emoji. <laughs> I've never had a dream like this before and don't know why I had it. <laughs> I love it, though. I know. I was curious of what kind of swimsuit it was, but he answered that question. He, I'm like, is he, he rocking it. like a one piece, a tankini? We're going like <clears throat> cheekies on the bottom. Cheekies. Mindy, do you wear cheekies? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, you got a cute no. little fanny. Why not? Thanks. Well, because I'm 40 something. So... <laughs> So, my 18 year old, 20 year old daughters love wearing cheeky under bottoms, I, swimsuit I love bottoms. We're called them cheekies. You gotta wear the cheekies. I mean, cheekies. do whatever you want. I'm no, you do you, girls or boys. <laughs> Since this is exactly. a boy wearing his sad, who cares? His sad gray bikini. <laughs> maybe it had sparkles, though. Maybe it had like a little shimmer to it. I hope so. I hope, I don't, I hope it for makes, it makes me mistake. sad to think of a sad Just gray to, bikini. He should feel proud of himself. It sounds like he's going to have a great day. Yeah. <laughs> he's, someone's packed the cooler full of wine. Someone's mm -hmm. got the floaties. It's going to be great. Just it's hopefully great. they're not in Lake Lanier. <laughs> Agreed. All right. This is Josie from Henderson. I was at a cemetery with my brother, as you do. You sure. Know, and we were sitting in the dirt. Mm -hmm. As you do. I mean, my brother and I try to get to the cemetery at least once a week to sit in the dirt and catch up. Yeah, yeah. It's a good it's a good place to do it. It's quiet. It is. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is quiet. <laughs> I noticed a huge lump of ground that protruded above the normal ground level. Mm, okay. I thought that it would be a little bit of a tripping hazard, so I decided to smooth it down. Oh, that is so kind of so you. So thoughtful, so, right? I will say, it's a total sidebar. I was a wedding I shot a few weeks ago. So yeah. a guest stops me. And this is right before the ceremony starts. Like I've got stuff on my mind. She's like, Do you have any duct tape? 
And I'm like, I... why would you have duct tape? You probably have boob tape, every other kind of tape, but not <laughs> duct tape. I actually go, I have electrical tape. <laughs> it's black. And sometimes if we have equipment issue. Yeah. Um, so she's like, oh, okay. Cause there's like a part of this doorway that's kind of like bent up. And I just don't want anyone slipping on it. I'm like, not doorway? my job. Like, like the bottom, like a I'm three... the photographer. I know, I know. But of course, Not I'm like the groundskeeper <laughs> of this church. <laughs> I know, but I'm like, I'll see what I can do. And of course, being me, I'm like, well, now I have to go fix this because I've been oh, tasked with it. I so I got my electrical did. tape and I made sure it was fixed. It's one of the I many got, jobs. I hope you got an extra tip for something. For that. <laughs> nope, <laughs> probably not. Nope. I started removing some dirt, but soon saw a skull. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> I revealed more dirt and saw the rest Why? of the skeleton. Stop digging! I stopped with the skull. Stop digging! There was almost no flesh on the bone except for a little oh. bit of muscle left on the cheeks of the face. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, Should have stopped digging a while ago. I looked up. See, the good digging. deeds go punished. They do. They do. It's not worth it, people. Just kidding. Be a nice person. Do good deeds. I looked up from digging and saw that I had unearthed a grave. A gravestone Duh. was just a few feet away. I was confused because the body was so close to the surface and not in a coffin. Sure. I also knew that this was an older woman, but I don't know how I knew. I just felt it. My question is, though, was she long? <laughs> was she a long, ghostly woman? Yeah. I started to bury the body again. That's nice. Very kind. Respectful. Yeah, good. But realized, since it was so close to the surface, the bones would be broken if I stepped on them. Oh, no. So I started to pack the dirt under the ribs and other bones so the skeleton oh, would be stronger. That's Again, very nice. respectful. Not your job. nice. But okay. I call the undertaker. Yeah, I'd be like, I accidentally dug up just the body that hazard. was just under like a quarter inch of dirt. Do you have electrical tape? <laughs> I could tape her together and then we yeah, could put hope. her back. Yeah. See a Doing this made me feel a connection to her. Oh. Like I wanted to protect her and to know her. I don't know exactly how to explain what I felt. While covering, I found various flowers. When I finished burying her, I placed the flowers atop the grave. Oh. I put a black zip tie on a fence nearby as a marker and I felt sorrow for her. Oh. It ended up kind of nice. It did. I mean, I mean, she was just trying to. Awful. Oh, a little awful. creepy, but nice. Good job. <laughs> creepy, but nice. I think you have a new career path, perhaps. You yeah. should investigate. <laughs> All right. I'm going to wrap up today with a dream from Derek. Oh. D E R R I K. Is that how you normally spell Derek? No. Well, that's one. I would think it was D-E-R-E-K is like okay, the standard. Derek. So I was going to ask. Derek. <laughs> Two R's. From Springer, Oklahoma. This dream has a title. It's titled Advice from a Dream Barista. Ooh, a dream barista. I love it. Don't know what it is, but I love it. I dreamt I was at a coffee shop cashing out my order when there was a pretty young woman barista cashing me out. Mm. She was very friendly and said, thanks so much. Have a nice day. Then her tone changed uh -oh. and she lowered her voice. What happened? She said, can I give you some personal advice off the record? <laughs> off the <Yeah>. record? <laughs> was anything on the record? <laughs> it's like the Starbucks newsletter. We're not going to put it in the we're newsletter. We're not going to put it in the Starbucks. Off, off the record. Let me just tell you. You need to change your underwear. <laughs> it's not cool to get a pink shrink anymore. <laughs> By the way, I do like the summer drinks. The, there's a summer skies drink that has like boba in it. Oh, I love boba. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotta get it. So gotta, okay. Anyways, that was not her okay. advice. Her advice said, can I give you some personal advice off the record? You should really relax and untense your face when you're talking to people. Oh, you you look really awkward and uncomfortable. Like, you're trying to be something you're not. You know what I do at that moment? If I was signing my receipt or Unt if I had paid with cash, 
I'd immediately <laughs> pull my tip back <laughs> and put it in my pocket or cross. Don't it tip off your barista. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> That's not how you get tips. <laughs> Just pretty much, she told him to stop having a resting bitch face. Yeah. I mean, Pretty that's much. what it boils down to. He says, I woke up. And that stuck with me all day. I have been self-conscious about my face. And I've been trying to relax oh, the muscles in it no. all day long. I told my wife about the dream and she says, it really doesn't apply to me. And I actually have a naturally relaxed and kind face anyway. Oh, oh. that's a good wife. Love it. That's sweet. But don't, don't. Let your dream baristas be bitches to you. No. That's not advice. That is not I advice. I hope you that's didn't. That's just rude. rude. I would have said, I don't like your tone, lady. Maybe you should change your face. I know it's a really bad comeback, but. <laughs> yeah, that kind of did suck. <laughs> I would still probably have said something. You know me. I know you would have. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Brooke, that wraps up the catnap segment. Always yeah. fun. Wow. A lot. A lot to get, a lot to do today. A lot. A it's lot of stuff to get through, but fun. Fun. fun Always fun. fun. Bestie, and if you're having a fun time, we want you to tell your best friend about the podcast. It's how we grow. That's how we get new listeners, by just telling one person. Again, always you can always tell your bestie. Mm-hmm. You can tell that server that is chasing you down from your dine and dash. <laughs> you can tell the nudist... At your local spa or bathhouse. <laughs> I mean, just keep your eyes up. Eyes up. Tell eyes them about up. the podcast. Tits up, yep. eyes up. Tell them tits about the podcast. Up. Well, I have eyes up. I can't control the tit <laughs> thing. That's just a Not these days. <laughs> <laughs> or you can That's tell... why I'm going to wear my towel up. <laughs> you can tell your favorite barista, I don't need your fucking advice. Just give me my drink. Mm-hmm. And listen to this podcast. I'll give you advice. I'll give you advice. My advice to you, listen to Revelations. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I love it, Mindy. That's right. I love it. (laughs) Again, it helps us grow and keep coming back every week. So we love you and thank you for supporting the show. Mwah. Mwah. Okay, Mindy. This topic I thought of you and me. Okay. Because we're both um, night owls, right? Yep. Definitely. And we have talked often about the importance of like a sleep routine like you know Mm -hmm. turning off your electronics and i don't do any of that no i have a routine it's not great i take on my contacts i brush Mm -hmm. my teeth usually hang out with my husband for a little bit watch tv and then he falls asleep because he's not a night owl yeah and then i am usually watching er and playing (laughs) like candy crush where by the way where are you with er Ooh, I'm like up, I'm like on season four now. Okay, I'm, I'm, uh, girl, I've surpassed you, and then by some. many seasons. Because, like I said, that Bravo vault opening up set me back. And then Shark, and then Week. Shark Week. I'm way behind on my ER. Ugh. I've been way You're behind. behind on my ER. You're behind. Sorry, that's my but that's my night routine. We do talk about night routines often, or ways to fall asleep, things yes. like that. But we've never, I don't think, talked about ways to wake. up. Oh, okay. And I think we both might benefit from some of this information. Um, how, can I ask how before we start? How yeah. do you, you wake up? I mean, is it just like a? It's you have terrible. an alarm on your phone or what? Yeah, your... on my phone, and I snooze, I snooze, I snooze, and do then you? I try to sleep as long as humanly possible until I know I have <laughs> to get up and leave the house but luckily with my current job i don't have to do anything like i put my hair in a ponytail and no makeup because there's no point like no it could my hair could get pulled out so it's like it always is back yeah easy peasy right so see mine changes so much based on if kids are here or not if i I don't have the kids here i'm usually i let myself wake up naturally Mm -hmm. at like eight i usually am up by eight thirty. But if I do have the kids here, I'm usually waking up early, so I set my alarm. But I used to be, like, a snooze person, mm-hmm. but now I'm not. Like, I am, like, alarm goes off once, I'm up, I got to get out Guess the door. what? That's good. Snoozing's okay. bad. I know. I learned snoozing's bad. Okay. Oh, I'm interested in this. Great topic. And sometimes I'm like, because, okay, I have a question, too. And, Bestie, I have a question, too. 
Let us know. She's got all the questions. Revelations. Look for us at Revelations Bestie on Facebook. Let us know. What is your snooze set for? How many minutes? Like back in your snooze and days, Mindy. Back in your snooze and days. Oh, probably 10. But I think the default on my app, because I... I use a app that's like tracks my sleep. So yeah, yeah. You can either set like an exact time to wake up or a window of time when you are oh. naturally should be up based on your circadian rhythm or your rhythm of your that's sleep. Fascinating. Or no alarm, but like I think this one's set to five minutes, but I don't use it. Well, mine was automatically set to nine, so it's fine. But like I'll be like, if I sleep nine more minutes. Then I'll do litter after I get home from work. <laughs> You're like bargaining with yourself. You're sleeping. I am bargaining with You're waiting. myself. Okay. I'm not a morning person, people. Okay. So rise and shine. How to tap into your brain waves for an effective morning routine. Okay. So have you ever wondered what's going on in your brain when you first wake up? Okay. So this is an article, and I've sent, I'll, I sent you the link, so it'll be posted, but this is what it says. What if we were to tell you that when you wake up, your brain waves are actually primed to set up a morning routine that enables you to hack your mind for peak performance? I think it's great. I believe it. I, believe I love it. a good hack, yeah. too. <laughs> Give me a <laughs> life yeah. hack. I love it. You know the feeling when the alarm has just rung and you wake up from your peaceful slumber and you're trying to muster up the strength to peel your eyelids open. Bingo. That's the exact moment that has potential for powerful transformation Hmm. and productivity. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. So when you initially wake from sleep, here's some science for you. I know you love science. Yes. How come I'm doing all these science ones? I don't know. And you're, you're not. Science like, thing. I feel like we've about switched. I know. I'll, I'll have an interesting one okay. in two weeks. Okay. Don't you worry. When you initially wake up from sleep, your brain first drips through theta waves mm-hmm. and then through alpha waves. These theta, are the alpha, theta, theta, alpha, theta, alpha. Because theta, 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 alpha. Alpha. then it goes to like beta and on and on. Because beta is like when you're fully awake. But, okay. So theta waves and then alpha waves are when you first wake up. Okay. And these are the frequencies your brain is operating at when you are deeply relaxed. Like when Mm. you've just woken up or after meditation. Okay. And it's here where the bridge between you and your subconscious mind is most accessible. Okay. Which I think is really interesting. So while the exact workings of the brain are still a mystery, even to neuroscientists, there are findings that can help us understand a little better how our brain activity works when we are awake and how we can use our brain waves for an advantageous morning routine. Okay. So I'm not going to go through all the waves, but first theta waves and then alpha waves I'll describe a little bit. Okay. So the theta brain waves occur when you are like – in that daydreaming state or REM sleep or just before you're about to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And the time your brain spends in this frequency is very short when you wake up, like five to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Think back to a time when you've been going about a mundane task, like taking a shower and you suddenly have like a light bulb moment as your mind becomes so disengaged with the automated task at hand or drifts elsewhere, it says a portal opens for ideas to pop up. This most likely happens during the theta state. Okay. Theta brainwaves are therefore seen to help improve creativity, relaxation, emotional intelligence, and problem solving. So one way you can utilize theta waves while awake is by focusing on the problem you want to solve just as you wake up. Because when you direct that focus on something in this semi-hypnotic state you might just find the answer to your problem now what are alpha waves so alpha waves are the brain frequency try again (laughs) your frequency i got mouth in my marbles Mm -hmm. (laughs) get it do you remember mouth Mouth are we a driver's ed teacher that used to say that did you take driver's ed at wallert no, I took it during the summer, remember? Oh, that's right. That's right. Oh, bestie. 
we got to tell you this story. So Mindy's like 10 days older than me. Sidebar. Sidebar. Mindy's like 10 days older than me. And to get into summer driver's ed, it's based on your birthday. And I remember for some reason you you no, dropped out. No, I think out, my parents can afford or didn't, it. Or didn't, yeah, or didn't yeah. pay for it or something. Yeah. No, it was more and expensive. I, and my parents I were like, no, you can wait. I was next on the list. Okay, ah. so Mindy and I are <laughs> I at the very, bo- like the youngest of our class. Because her yes. birthday August, is in August, mine's in September. And September the cutoff September. is mid-September. So I got into summer driver's ed. Only because so I, I didn't. Only because Mindy didn't. Seriously, people, we're not making this up. So I took summer driver's ed. I actually had it done and passed and had to wait till I turned 16 in September to actually get my license. So I had like yep. finished it, but I still didn't have my license. And then poor Mindy had to wait a whole semester. Yeah, I got to a get second semester junior her year. license because she didn't take so- anyway. Yeah, but you uh, did drive me around, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Of I course, probably did not give you. you as much gas money as I should have, but thanks. I don't think you gave me gas money. I don't <laughs> think I ever gave you gas money. No. I think no, we don't need that we kind just of stole shit, it. Mindy. No. We just we we would suck it out of other cars, <laughs> siphon it, <laughs> siphon it. <laughs> okay, so alpha waves. Most free. Okay, the brain frequency most known for promoting feelings of calmness. Mm. And relaxation. Okay. And they sit between the subconscious theta waves and the alert and conscious beta waves. So in Mm. between, like, just coming out of sleep and then when you're fully awake, starting to do stuff. I like like that wave. I want the alpha waves all the time. And this is kind of what it's saying. It's like if you get high, it kind of feels like that, the alpha wave. I hope so. I want to be able to tap into my alpha Mm. waves. These brain waves are important because they can help reduce stress levels and make it easier to get into a flow and absorb information. Hmm. And they said, this totally makes sense, children's brains operate predominantly in that impressional wow. alpha waves from about 7 to 12, which is why they're like sponges. Yeah. And they oh. absorb every new information and in just the world around them. Fascinating. So... Before you get up for the day and complete all your tasks in that beta state, you should enjoy that happy and relaxed alpha state. Mm -hmm. You can get things done with less effort and in a calmer state while you're in alpha, which makes it a perfect time to journal, read, move your body. Write in your germ journal. Write in your germ journal. (laughs) Write all the germs you had last night. All the germs germs. because you didn't wash your hands and you had chicken. Ew, salmonella. 7-Eleven salmonella. Um, No, (sighs) that's a perfect time to write in your dream journal. It is. I mean, it actually is, is, Minnie. Like, literally, this is what the science is saying. Okay, good. So since your subconscious mind is still active, you can use this time to manipulate Nope. You can use this time to manipulate your brain waves to train your brain to accomplish more during the day. Mm -hmm. This is exactly where the importance of a good morning routine comes in. So just as important as your good bedtime routine, your waking up routine is just as important. So the still hours of morning may be the only time we get to focus on our own self-development creativity Mm -hmm. and personal interests which makes Makes having an effective and personal morning routine an even more vital part of your day so increasing our creativity isn't just reserved for artists and musician musicians it's an essential skill to build for problem solving and productivity and can help us navigate through life with multiple perspectives on things and i think that's very important Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you're so relaxed and highly suggestible when you first wake up, starting your day positively with things that bring you joy and meaning can kickstart your day for success. Okay. It's a great idea to use the first hour of the morning. See, this is what I do wrong. I wait till the absolute last minute to get up, get dressed, get ready, yeah, and go. go. I don't give myself yeah. that first hour mm-hmm. of the morning. I mean, who to has a fucking a hour? Routine. No one, but you know what? It's very important. So this will not only have positive effects on your mental well-being, but also boost your productivity and mood. 
So I think it might be worth it, but oh god, it's tough. It is Everybody hard. Everybody knows I mean, it's tough to get up. I mean, I guess that's why people feel good, you know, when they wake up and, you know, exercise morning routines. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Morning routine of exercising or having breakfast. And, and those people are super happy and healthy, and that's why I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy, but. No, all good. I'm glad you're I not, not happy. I want to sleep. I want to sleep. But I also have insomnia, so I, uh, I got to yeah. change things. It's tough. It is tough. In contrast. If you wake up immediately and check your phone or think negatively Mm -hmm. or immediately enter. Yeah. Right? Immediately. Phone. Phone. You are triggering your brain to enter a more alert state. So you're bypassing that crucial time for your brain to be in a state of wakeful relaxation. So you're basically kind of skipping beta or I'm sorry, alpha and going right to to beta. And you're Uh missing out on that prime time to access your subconscious I wonder and if it's like your a good time to like study read yeah. I don't know like what maybe we're reverse maybe our alpha waves are at night maybe that's <laughs> why we're night thinking. people but maybe. I don't know so these are the things and they're kind of similar to a good nighttime routine but you don't think about it in the morning. I just, again, yeah. I feel like yeah. you learn so, you read so much about how to fall asleep in good nighttime, but no, you don't really great. look at no. how you're supposed to wake up. Agreed. Yeah. Limit time on your phone, visualize or meditate, positive affirmations, mm. journal, you are beautiful. and move your body. So Mindy, like you already know all this. You're so smart. But we don't do it. So. Well, I, I know what I should do, but I don't. <laughs> we know do it. what we're supposed to do. But I we literally, don't do. my alarm goes off. I shut off as quick as I can because I usually have to wake up earlier than Mark when I have the kids. And Mindy, you wake up at the crack I of put fucking dawn. My I'm contacts sorry. in. I brush my teeth. I drive them to school in my pajamas. Good girl. I'm <laughs> glad you don't get dressed. Fuck I'm no. so proud of you. For I'm that. wearing like my cloud pajamas. If I got that. pulled over, I would be uh, super cool, but. Do you know my dad gets so mad at me? Like, if I show up at their house, like, if I go over there, sometimes I'll just be in my pajamas. Sure. Which, let me say. Clothes like, are clothes. Yeah, I love matching jammies, but sometimes it's just, like, a t-shirt and leggings sure. or something. Yeah, of course. And he's like, what if you got stranded on the side of the road? No one would come help you because you look like a weirdo. Dad? I'm like, Dad. Please. Someone is not going to judge someone if they're wearing pajamas People or not. They're either going to help you or not. Yeah, no. <laughs> he's I do feel always, bad, though. That's so He's always so concerned if I drive in pajamas. I'm like, you're like, first of I'm all, not, if my car I'm breaks not down, going, I'm, no. I'm not getting gas. I'm, I'm not you. going to the grocery store. I'm literally driving seven minutes to your house. <laughs> yep. I do. I will say that on the days that I have to stop by, like, the store on the way home, like, say, like, pick up a prescription or something i will at least try to put on a bra and I'll put on bra a, and a, jeans or something and like i have jeans even like leggings so i don't look as jammy like i get it yeah i did try. that just I, I mean just to tell you we can cut this but when i i was in break. pajamas when we went on our break and i threw on a bra and a shirt and jeans drove to high v got my prescription came back put on a different set of pajamas <laughs> Okay, so limit time on your phone. This is probably the hardest yeah, the for worst. everyone. Yep. But bombarding your cuz okay, so like I said, your it's a very your brain is very suggestible during this alpha time. So if you're bombarding bombarding your brain Bombard. with social media or mm-hmm. immediately going Email, into work emails, work, you know, yep. it can spoil your morning routine. I know. So the brain when it wakes has transitioned from deep sleep, which is delta. We're not even going to get yep. into that. But delta into the theta waves, which are important for your memory, learning, and problem solving. So this is actually like legit important stuff. When you jump on your phone, as soon as your eyes open, you're jolting your brain straight into alertness, and it can mess with your performance for the whole day. So you've skipped those vital minutes your brain needs in theta and completely glossed over alpha mm-hmm. and you're losing all that potential, potential yeah. to change your entire day. I love the idea of like 
positive affirmations. Like this I is what too. I'm going to do today. This is what I'm how I'm going to be a good human today. Like that's, that's I think if everyone did that would be the world would be a better place. It would be like I often find myself immediately waking up and being like, here's what I need to do. Like and I start making lists in my yeah. head. Like I need to be able to stop. But again, I use an excuse as a Virgo, but. We can't help it, Mindy. <laughs> That's what yes. a Virgo brain does. This is just yeah. the sign we were born under. We can't help yep. that. In addition, studies have found that checking emails and receiving notifications can mm. trigger stress and affect your ability to concentrate on a single task, and it's called switch cost. Oh, switch So if you want to hack your mind for peak performance and reduce stress and anxiety in the mornings, Choosing to limit time on your phone will be highly beneficial, which is hard. It's the same as going to sleep. I have a hard Mm -hmm. time with Mm -hmm. screen time. Yep. So the visualization or the meditation is just as important. So your brain waves in the morning are operating at their optimal frequency for visualizing what you want to create in your life. Mm. And like I said, mm. I think we all wake up and like grab our phone. Like, so we're missing out. We're focusing on, on the this, little things, not the little things. The and it's bigger things. these small like, windows. We're talking yeah, about like small. an hour. Within an hour of the time you wake up, we're missing out on yeah. this actual crucial time to be able to tap into things that yeah. we normally wouldn't be able to. While your brain is super relaxed in that alpha stage, it's easy to close your eyes and shift into meditation. So it's as simple as just propping yourself up into a comfortable seat Mm -hmm. and listening to or following a video on YouTube. You're allowed to use your phone if you're meditating. Oh, for meditating. Okay. Or using an app like Headspace, you know, Mm -hmm. as part of your morning routine. So it's here. Peloton has has meditations that are very good. What does? Peloton. Peloton. Has, oh, see? Yeah. Good. Exactly. There's yeah. so many options out there. There's so many options out there, but you have to utilize this specific time because your brain yes. otherwise goes straight to beta and Stay, you straight lose to work. that. Yeah. So this is where you can spend time free from negative thoughts or worries, just focusing on your breath and harnessing this peaceful time to visualize what you want for your day, your dreams, or your future self. And studies have shown that regular meditation even helps to boost this alpha activity, which can have beneficial effects on mood and stress levels. And I read this, and it sounds so great. It sounds yet, beautiful. Okay, yes. Well, what, well let's what not talk lo- about doing it. Let's try to do it. Okay, you can say that that's try, not what Mindy. I do, but let's change the mindset. Let's, and let's say let's try to do this. We're going to make a concerted effort of and that's effort. the thing yeah. is like it's not going to be easy and i think for most of people it's not going to be easy but you have to make that effort to switch that state of mind and yeah. give yourself this time and utilize the advantages of these theta and alpha waves because you don't get that any other time of day yeah that even if has you did to it- be in the morning even if you did it, say like I want to. I'm my goal is to do it one day this week. On Wednesday, I'm gonna w- not allow myself to go on my phone, and then you don't have the anxiety of like, oh, every day I can't go. On my, like, start with one day. See so how I think it even there'd be benefit of one. Yeah, yeah. See if it works for you. I know on Wednesdays I have to go mow the lawn at my dad's <laughs> house. <laughs> Woohoo! And that's a so negative weird. thought for me. So maybe on Wednesdays, I'm going to try to do things differently in my head and let's keep progress let's keep track mindy let's try wednesdays okay. let's make wednesdays our day well wednesdays i usually have to wake up early so i'm not gonna work so okay so what's wednesdays. a good day well <laughs> okay, i'll, I'll pick wednesdays. thursdays and i can do thursdays oh, well i can do any day so let's do <laughs> thursdays and let's see how it works for a couple weeks and let's just oh thursdays thursdays the day that this podcast comes out so don't exactly. push play yet so it's perfect. i'll remind you thursdays Revelations we'll Day. We'll be like, I was really good today or, oh, shit, I messed up and check the weather right away yep. or I checked my email. Okay. We're going to be good next we'll Thursday, Mindy. We're do it. Okay. Okay. Pinky promise. Pinky promise. Since your brain is a record of the past, we all know this, visualizing a future you want to bring about and imagining the emotions you will feel sparks your neurons, actually sparks your neurons. To create new associations so your brain begins to see things in a different way. Mm -hmm. This is fascinating to me. Yep. 
The brain sees these images of your goals as reality because the brain can't distinguish real from imaginary, which is why visualizing positive outcomes can be game changing for your own success, which I think is fascinating because people are like, don't put that out into the world or I don't want that manifestation. Don't even Mm -hmm. say it or whatever. And I think that is actually positive. But at the same time, it's like, you have to be proactive. It's not just about not putting things out there. It's about changing your whole mindset. Mindset, which I get. Yeah. Positive affirmations, Mindy. This is what you said yep. you wanted to try to do. Mm-hmm. So we've all had mornings where we let ne- let negative self talk or anxieties yeah. about the day get to us. Um, Hello. Those mornings are. <laughs> Every morning. <laughs> so why not use that time where we can tap into that subconscious to speak kindly to yourself? Again, mm-hmm, it's so mm-hmm. these are simple things, and it's all scientific. These theta and alpha waves are very minimal times in your life or your day. Take yeah. advantage of yeah. them, right? You can do this by saying a lot of positive statements to yourself, like I am beautiful if i'm mindy i'm saying i am beautiful you can and- don't say that see that's a negative <laughs> affirmation you just made for yourself i am brooke and i am beautiful say it that way now do it. i am brooke and i am beautiful right. damn it so <laughs> um even looking at yourself in the mirror and saying this can be okay so doing so will not only like start your day on a positive note but it kind of reprograms your brain to think better of yourself So information that is stored in our subconscious is what we believe on a deep level. So if we can use the sleepy, half-conscious state to fill it with affirming and empowering statements about ourselves, it will eventually become our reality and our belief system. That's right. Believe it. And it's like when you tell children this. that they're smart and they're beautiful, they believe it. You have to do that for yourself. It's not just for children to hear positive things. You have to but do we, it for your own self. You're absolutely right. And it's easier said than done, right? Mm-hmm. It's easier to it's tell true. someone else to do that than it is to do it for yourself. And yep. I think you and I are both really guilty of that. So those creative juices are free flowing when your brain is in that theta waves as you first wake up. This is when you want to jot down all the ideas you have swirling around your head straight away. Because once you get up and active, chances are you'll forget all those light bulb moments Mm -hmm. you just told yourself you'd remember. We've all been there. Yeah. I agree. Because, yeah, I, I, I just told Mindy recently that I've been dreaming a lot lately, but I don't get up and write it down. But it's like I'm just starting to... See, there you go. You got to be there and process my dreams and actually like, start remembering them. So it's it's been kind of it's exciting. A process. It's a process. Yeah, it is a process. And then how about a brain dump? Julia Cameron, she's an author, came up with this technique where you fill three morning pages with a stream of consciousness about anything that's on your mind. I love that idea. I love it too. Yeah. And Mindy has a dream journal, so you can do this too in mm-hmm. your dream journal. And if you go to remolations.com slash support, you can get a Remolation Stream Journal and start this process. Yes, you can. It's, you can. it's merch. We have Dream Journal merch. Mm-hmm. Doing so can help spark your creativity, structure your thoughts, and just bring clarity and direction to your day. Like start out with positivity yeah. and it can change your day completely. And that's Absolutely. really hard when you wake up because usually, you know, you're grumpy. You don't want to start your day. But you know what? You put it out there. It's so easy to walk, wake up in a bad mood. So easy. it is. It's a choice. So I easy. really feel like waking up and if you're in a bad mood or a good mood uh, for the day, you can make that choice in the morning. And that's what this is all about. It's yep. how to do that. Set up yourself. And it's for, not for, easy. It's a complete yeah. change of life. It really is a complete change of lifestyle. But set up yourself for success. So it is worth it. So you can use this early morning relaxation time to just write down what you're grateful for, which is another great way to just hack your brain for positivity. I think it's all about positivity. Mm -hmm. Like, I have an example. Okay, so I was at a job once um, when I was working in admissions for a college. And this wasn't my particular job, but 
admissions officers would have so many calls they had to make out to just trying to get students every day. Yeah. And our boss would be like, smile and dial. That was the <laughs> slogan. Because even if you're saying stuff when you're smiling, it comes out differently than but when you're not. Saying, yeah, that's true. And it's it's like just changing even that little yeah. thing can help. Hmm. And then move your body. Although you may not want to leave your bed, which I don't. Uh, <laughs> Stretching. You'll find that you're yoga. actually able to move a lot easier when you're still in that relaxed hmm. flow state in the early morning or when you first wake up. Yeah. So once you're up and in the zone, you'll you'll find getting active to be rewarding experience, whether that's going for a walk, a gentle jog, morning yoga, or dancing around your bedroom. I can do that. That one you can do. Put I can do list. the dancing around my bedroom. And exercising in the morning is a great way to start the day as it gets the blood flowing and positively affects mm -hmm. your mood, bringing mental clarity and an all-important dopamine hit. We all need I that dopamine I love my hit. dopes in the morning. Give me my dope hit. I love it. <laughs> Even better is that you can get into that zen zone and kill two birds with one stone if you make your movement into meditation. Mm. So by focusing purely on the activity you're doing – is allowing yourself to flow freely through the movements. Mm -hmm. So lastly, I just want to say that mastering your morning is about tapping into your brainwaves and setting up a morning routine that allows you to own your morning and the direction of your life, which is huge. Yes. Huge. And you can play around and find out what feels good to you and start small, like we said, Thursday mm -hmm. morning. One day a week. Build a morning routine that brings positive results. Yes. And by setting up these routines and habits and mastering your thoughts in the morning, you're supporting your efforts to achieve basically your goals and live the life you yeah. desire. Mm -hmm. It sounds so easy, but it's not, you guys. It's hard. It's hard to break the cycle. It. We're going to try. It's hard to change your life. It's hard to change getting up in the morning because it's it's just hard, people. We know it. We get it. But the thing I like most is, remember this. We transition to sleep at night. Why don't we transition to wake up? Yep. And I think that's a really good, the key thing to take away from this, positivity and realizing we're, we know all the stuff we need to do to try to fall asleep, but we need to realize there's more stuff to do when we wake up. There's that opportunity to use these theta and alpha waves to achieve more than we thought was possible. I can't wait to see the results. <gasps> Talk to you next Thursday. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I'm something I have not even have had that has even crossed my conscious mind is morning routines. I mean, yeah, you hear of it, but you haven't. I've never really thought about the importance. No, of it. like I said, you always hear about falling asleep but not waking up. Beautiful, wonderful job. All right, Mindy. Well, that wraps up our episode, and 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 <laughs> bestie. Until next week, stay away from bathhouses and tidal waves. And evil doctors. Yeah. All off my list. All off my list. And sweet, sweet dreams, dreams bitches. bitches. I am so hungry. I want a sandwich. <laughs> and I'm what like, the hot dog in my uh, tummy. I want a hot dog. But then I eat the hot dog. I'm like, I don't, I don't want, want a hot, hot dog, dog again. <laughs>